Let's talk about the controversial issue, the church's attitude to women and, and gay people. Dermot, this is a personal issue for you, as we saw in the first part of this interview, but it's also an area you have explored as an academic. How do you explain the church's attitude to, towards gay people and, and towards the ordination of women, for example, um, especially in the case of the Anglican Church and the Roman Catholic Church? Why has the church not gone with the times? Because the church is an institution uh, enmeshed in human experience and history. And the human experience and history out of which the church emerged in its last 2,000 years was dominated by men. And men created the sacred writings which go to make up the church's tradition. Uh, the Hebrew scripture, which Christians call the Old Testament, and on top of that, a, a, a New Testament. And those writings, mostly written by men, uh, there are a cacophony of voices within them, but most of them are negative on the subject of same-sex relations. And that is, it can be explained by the way that Jewish society worked. It can be explained by who the first Christians were. They were marginal people in the Roman Empire um, with uh, a, a rather negative attitude to the mainstream culture. The mainstream culture was that of the Roman Empire. And the Roman Empire's uh, attitude to homosexuality was complicated but had positive sides to it and Christians took again that. So what you've got to say to start with is that the Bible is predominantly negative towards homosexuality. That's just a fact, it's a given. And what you have to do with that fact is to explore it and say, well, the church and the Bible are, have been wrong for 2,000 years on these subjects, as the church was wrong on the subject of the institution of slavery for many, very many centuries within that. That's the context. And the, the, the other thing to say about Christianity is that it is a very young religion. It's only been around for 2,000 years, and you wouldn't expect it to get everything right. Now, society presents it with a startling new insight in the West. And that is that there really isn't any problem about same-sex relationships. It takes a long time for the church to get its head around that. And that, in a sense, is a healthy thing. Because the church has its tradition. It's got to check out anything new. Because something new may be bad. And of course, that's what a lot of Christians have found about homosexuality. I think they're wrong. But it was at least worth them having that debate. But you're, say, you're saying the church was wrong. Uh, of course, the, the, all experience of God is coloured by the historical context, the cultural context in which people have the experience of God. Mm -hmm. And the church has seen that, I think, with other, with other issues. Uh, the attitude towards gay people and the attitude towards the ordination of women, that seems to be something much more tenacious. Why, why do you think that is? Why is it so strange to say that's how those people experience God through that particular historical cultural framework? But now, of course, whilst retaining the core message, we can look at these things from a different cultural and historical framework. Why is that so hard for the church? Why is it still so hard for so many people in the church? Because the, there has been such a long tradition on the other side and that the problem is assessing what is core and what isn't core. Well, once you see that same-sex relationships produce the same sort of spectrums of human experience, love, faithfulness, commitment, as well as promiscuity and selfishness, once you see that that's the same in same-sex relationships as in heterosexual sexual relationships, then you're in, an, in a different, <coughs> then you're in a different place from uh, the way that the church has experienced the, that problem before, which was a very barren, narrow experience of these things. Peter, it seems to me that what Dermot is saying, that it's essentially an institutional problem rather than a religious one, rather than a problem about the core of Christianity. Is that how you see it as well? Yes, I, I think I might nuance it slightly differently in that although there's been tremendous movement in our culture that's very welcome towards um, honouring the experience of women and of lesbian gay people mm -hmm. and so forth, 
Um, I, one of the things we're learning, isn't it, that there's also extraordinary prejudice and violence against women and against sexual minorities still in our community. And that's something that is very evident in Sheffield, where women experience violence in the home disproportionately. Um, so I'd, I'd say that I think it is, it is indeed the case that Christianity is just learning how to change its mind on these areas. But um, there's also, I think, a very troubling collusion in the church um, with views of women and of, other and of minorities that actually are very demeaning. And so there's been this difficulty of change, but there's also, uh, there's also an, uh, an element of um, responsibility that needs to be faced. Yes, yeah, so the, you're, I think you're saying it would be unfair to criticise just the church. I mean, if we look at the whole Me Too movement at the moment, the stuff that people in Hollywood got away with, yeah. it, it's, the, it's the current culture I'm not as well. saying, I'm, I'm saying that actually the church needs to be held to account for its collusion with that. But, but aren't you also saying that it is still hard for the church as it is for the rest of society because yeah. the rest of society is also permeated still by so many prejudices? Yeah. How do you personally feel about the ordination of women as priests, bishops, archbishops? Well, um, I've uh, really worked very strongly for it since before I was ordained. And so for me, it's a, it's a moment of real joy. But it's only a beginning because there is such a depth of prejudice that needs to be worked through and challenged that it's really going to be 20 or 30 years before I think we'll see the fruit of it. Do you think that uh, uh, that also applies to the, the blessing of gay marriage, for example, or gay priests, openly gay priests, and then higher up the ladder, as it were? But of course, we've had openly gay priests for many, many, many years. Um, I, I hope that the fruit of that will be seen but my fear is that actually in, in areas the church is actually pulling back rather than going forward. And in some areas the situation is worse for less by gay people than it was 20 years ago. Why do you think that is? A sort of new confidence of a conservative wing in the church, just as we've seen a resurgence of the right in politics, so we've seen a resurgence mm -hmm. in the church. Mm. As a historian, uh, uh, Peter was talking about decades, uh, uh, the full acceptance of gay and lesbian and, and, uh, uh, people and, and the, um, the full acceptance of gay marriage, when will that come? Well, uh, it'll be in stages. Equal marriage, I think it's a much better word than gay marriage. Okay. Equal marriage, uh, I think, will be there in 50 years. And it'll probably come in a rather untidy way, rather as the church changed its attitude to divorce very recently. The, the Church of England uh, really only said something sensible about divorce and consistent about divorce at the, in the beginning of the 2000s. So you will get the same sort of gradual, messy process of acceptance, and you'll get some who won't, just as there are some who don't accept the ordination of women uh, or women as bishops. We're in that church at the moment in the Church of England. So equal marriage will have the same sort of uh, gradual, messy acceptance, and there will be lots of uh, throwing toys out of the pram in the process. Okay, thank you. In the, uh, in the third part of the interview, I will look at uh, an even more controversial topic, the relationship between religion and terrorism.